Good afternoon, everyone. James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And today we're going to be talking about how to make a water container out of a cactus pad. Now, longtime viewers will know that I've already done this a few years back in a previous video. However, that video was for a knife review for the BHK Woodsman Pro Knife. And because of that, the subject matter was the knife itself, the testing. So I kind of just skimmed through this. So this way I can elaborate on it more. Not only that, but looking back at that video, as proud as I am, it was an early video. Uh, you could hear a lot of wind noise, a lot of, uh, I don't know, I just think it hasn't aged as well. So this way I have a lot more experience, not only with recording and editing, but as well as, you know, with the outdoors. So we could just talk about it a little bit better. So hopefully you guys are ready. Hope you guys are interested. Thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Now, obviously, when we're talking about hydration and survival situation, you know, water is absolutely key to survival in any situation, but particularly out here in the desert where water is scarce, it just makes it that much more precious. Now, if you do find yourself a water, a source of water out here, take advantage of that, you know, utilize it as much as you can. However, you also want to keep your wits about you because that water most likely will not be safe and there's going to be bacteria and protozoa in it. So if you are really desperate, you're really lost, you know, you, you're going to want to just take your chances. However, if you can keep your wits about you and, you know, take your time, plan things accordingly, you want to purify that water. Just make it safe so you don't want to be from a, go from a bad situation to a worse one. So in case you can't find any container out here, we're going to use one of these cactus pads. Now, ideally, you want something large. The larger pa the pad, the more water it's going to be able to hold. And you want to look for one that looks relatively healthy. You don't want one that has bug bites or, you know, any kind of tarnishing, any kind of damage, uh, because you're going to be hollowing out this pad, and you want to take your time with it. If there's already tar uh, damage to it and punctures, and then you're hollowing it out and you fill it up with water, and then you notice it's dripping, then you kind of just got to start all over again and you're just wasting energy and time. So this looks very good right here. This is the one that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and uh, cut it out. Now, of course, cactus pad is going to be covered with thorns and these small hair-like fibers called glochids. You really want to avoid touching them with your hand. That wouldn't be very smart. So what I'm using here is some yucca stalks here. I'm sorry, some yucca spikes. And they're going to be my improvised tongs. So I can just transport this to my campsite without, you know, any heartache and pain on my part. So I'm just going to hold it. Then I'm going to get my knife, cut at the base. There we go. I'm not touching the spikes on this at all, so I'm not going to be getting them in my hands. Now, if you are going to be using yucca for this, be careful with the spikes here, you know, because everything out here is out to stab you. So just be careful with that. And then we're going to transport this to our camp so we can start cleaning it out. Okay, so we have our cactus pad. Now before we begin hollowing that out, we're going to get a fire started so we can throw some rocks in there, get them nice and hot because we're going to use the stone boiling method to clean our water. So let's go ahead and get that fire going. Flint and steel style. There we go. Stubborn little rock. Tender bundle. Well, our fire is heating up and getting nice and hot. Now we're gonna place some rocks in here. Now, these rocks are gonna be placed in the container. Uh, personally, I like to go for roundish rocks so that you know there's not any jagged edges that can damage the pad itself. And also you wanna kinda make sure that they're dry rocks as well because there's, if there's moisture in here and they get hot in a fire, they can explode, they can pop, and you know you don't want pebbles going into your eyes or anything. Now, it's pretty dry out here, so I don't gotta worry about that. But, you know, if you're picking up rocks by a stream or something, just I'd, I'd avoid that. So right now, just place them in here. Start raising that temperature. Mm -hmm. 
So it's time to start scraping off all these thorns and glochids from our cactus pad. Now I'm gonna start using, at first, I'm gonna start using this yucca. You kinda just brush it off like this. You wanna get the big stuff out of the way. And then the small hair-like follicles, the, the glochids, you could just, um, we could just place it over the fire afterwards so it could gently just, the flames can just lick it off. Take your time, don't get too aggressive, and you start, you know, cutting into the pad. Once again, if you puncture that pad, it's not going to hold water, or at least not going to hold it very long, and then you're kind of just wasting your time and energy, your calories. So just play it smart. Don't get careless. You could do this. You could use some rocks, preferably rocks with like a, a good jagged edge. This one does not have that, so it's not doing that good of a job. And once again, you can also use the 90 degree spine on your knife to just flatten this out. Okay, so this has already been done pretty well. It's been just, just the large stuff is out. Now, of course, you're still going to have all these, a lot of these small glochids. Those are very small. They get on your fingers, and it's just going to be a pain in the butt. They're there for days. Uh, they're like splinters. So I'm just going to gently, gently, just for a couple seconds, place my pad over the flames so the flames can just kind of burn them off. I don't want to roast my pad. We're not trying to eat it. But just a little bit. Just to make sure it's a friendlier container for me to be holding later. Okay, so for the majority of the spines and all the nasties have been neutralized. Okay, so I can grab it with my hand fairly, relatively you know, with ease, not not completely, but for the most part. Now I'm gonna start hollowing out the pad. Now this is at the bottom where I removed it from its stalk. I'm gonna get that part, and I'm just gonna open the mouth just a slight bit more. Slice it off. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna kinda keep it even. And then we're gonna start going in here with the blade. Gently. Now, this is the part that you really don't want to get careless because the more time the blade is spent in the cactus, the more likely the chances that you're going to have an accident and puncture it, and then you're just wasting your time. So just be very careful. Now, of course, if you are in a survival situation, chances are you're, you're not going to have much of a choice what knife you're using. Luckily for us, we're out here making a YouTube video, so um, I had to luxury of choosing my blade and I'm choosing the Mora Consul because it's a very nice thin blade so it's very precise for this kind of work and I'm just removing the fillings it kind of looks like cantaloupe but it tastes nothing like cantaloupe uh, it doesn't taste bad but it's kind of of a tasteless um, taste but um, but it's edible so if you are hungry this also provides some fiber some vitamin A vitamin E um, the slime of it also can be used for say like scrapes or sunburns, bug bites. You can rub this on and there's some mild medicinal property uh, properties to it, something like aloe vera. You can see how slimy that is. So you can also get other uses from this as well, either a food source or a first aid source. Breakfast time. It's not bad. Not the best either, but it's not bad. Okay, so our container is already hollowed out. I took, it took me about 10 minutes tops, just taking my time. So now I need to wedge this open so I can have room in there for the water as well as the stones. So what I have here is this small piece of branch that I sawed off from a nearby tree. And I just kind of want to go in with my knife and just cut out any jagged edges. Once again, I'm trying to just smooth this out just to not stress the, the walls of the pad. So just kind of round things out a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Cactus is pretty tough, but you know, the more precautions, the better. Okay, so check it out. It's already wedged open. Now you're not gonna need this afterwards. Uh, within a couple hours from now, that's just gonna stay hardened that way and you can remove the stick from there or rock or whatever you use to prop this open. So now we're ready. So I'm gonna go to the nearby stream, fill this with water and then come back to fire so we can place our rocks.
so here's our container with water so far there doesn't appear to be any leaks I just sorry I just spilled some but uh, so far there doesn't appear to be any leaks or punctures at all so that's a good sign now it's getting damn hot right now at this time of year in Texas already and this water looks so damn appetizing uh, but once again you want to just take precautions and play it safe so we're just gonna head on over back to camp and just uh, boil this water the pad down now we're gonna get our little tongs here move the charcoal all these coals get them out of the way and we're gonna find these hot rocks that they've been burning here for a good 20 to half an hour at this point point. and that's just gonna boil away the bacteria all the protozoa All right guys, so as you can tell, the water is boiling now and it's killing off all the germs, all the protozoa, you know, so it's making it safe to drink. Now, of course, there's gonna be some smart Alex there who's gonna, are gonna, you know, ridicule the fact that I'm trying to clean the water and yet I'm placing ashy rocks in here. There's just no going around the ashes. And in fact, ashes don't have bacteria, so don't worry about that. And if you are in a survival situation or roughing it out, you know, you really can't be too picky. This isn't water that you're going to be getting at a fine restaurant. So, bottoms up. We're just going to let this uh, cool off for a little bit because, you know, it's hot water right now and we don't want to be drinking tea in the midday sun. So, uh, stick with us. All right, so we just let our fire just cool off. We don't need it in the midday sun. It's really hot out here. So, other than cleaning our water, we don't need it. Okay, so we've let it cool off for about 15 minutes. I'm sure it's still a little warm, but just for the sake of hurrying this video along, I'm just going to show you guys. Uh, time to take a sip. It's not bad. Um, it's warm. It, it tastes like chamomile tea, pretty much. Just like a thicker water. The water's mixing with the goo of the, of the cactus. So it's like a more mucusy uh, texture to it. But uh, overall, it's not bad. And, you know, it's safe to drink now. Not a doubt in my mind, there's some very fancy Beverly Hills Spa that charges you $200 for something like this. You know, and here we have it for free in abundance. It's a little hard to convey through video, but let me see if I could just pour a little bit of this water out so you guys can see how just how mucusy it gets. It, it look, it's going to go a little slow. Look. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can catch that. Well guys, that's about the conclusion of this video. Once again, I know I've already talked about this before, but I really wanted to come back now that I have more experience both in front and behind the camera and just elaborate it on a little bit more. Now, realistically guys, before, before going on, I really want to make a disclaimer that on our way to come and film this, we really walked past about four plastic bottles. So if you really are in a, you know, a bad situation, those bottles would have just done this much faster. You know, so um, it's good to learn these skills, le learn, know, know what our ancestors were doing and know how to, you know, craft things off the land. But at the same time, you want to keep that resourceful mentality. And in, a, in many ways, you know, you want to keep a lazy man's perspective and, you know, not waste as much calories. So, you know, before you do this, look around if you can find something else that'll make it a little easier. You know, just a little bit of common sense, because I think sometimes with, with woodcraft and survival channels we tend to romanticize this stuff that we may not need to use necessarily so you know just my two cents anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video i had a lot of fun making it guys we're coming back with junkyard fox for 2018 i know we've been a little slow before um these last couple months but we're coming back and thank you all so much for the support the likes the friendship guys it means the world to me i'm very passionate about this and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts so cheers guys give us a like if you enjoyed this video Go ahead and comment below, and I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.